128 players came, now only four remain. We are down to the crunch in the biggest tournament on the world pool calendar. Part of the Matchroom Pool series, of course, which is going from strength to strength. Which of these two players will go from strength to strength over the next couple of hours? I'm delighted to be joined by Carl Boys, uh, Alex Laley, I'm sorry, and also by the big sister of that man, Albin Auschen. So, Jasmine, first to you. How's he feeling? <laughs> Well, hi, everybody. Um, pleasure to be back. Well, he is Alvin, you know, he's focused, he's, uh, he's calm. I think he's ready to play this amazing match. And I think I'm more nervous than him, to be honest. <laughs> and is it difficult commentating on him? Does that ease the nerves a little? It does ease, but it's, I'm always nervous, you know, especially when I'm, when I'm watching my brother in a big Rack, match, it will one. never change. But then Mr. again, Ocean. sitting here front row, it's a big pleasure and a big honor to be here with you guys. The pleasure's all ours. So, Alex, this is a, a big Moscone Cup match as well as a World Championship contest. It's a foul. Yeah, both contenders. They were already on the short list before this tournament, let alone before they got Start to the semifinals. Please. The winner of the tournament, if it were to be one of the Europeans, will be playing the Moscone Cup. But mostly I'm looking forward to great pool, great nine ball. And this is a grand start for Arkady. His leg was way short of the short rail. Albin got the break. Cue ball scratch, ball in hand for the Spaniard. This is what you like. Yeah, cue uh, ball got kicked right away straight into the corner pocket of course not the start that you want but shake it off and focus when you get your first chance extension please extension called by david okady 30 seconds per shot and one extension per rack what impressed me many things impressed me when david was playing yesterday but his management of the shot clock was no, second to none taking time checking angles but only a few occasions did we hear the clock beeping was really in sync with the clock started out good against max lechner austrian who sort of imploded in that match it was uh, everyone was feeling sorry for him but doesn't take anything away from how David started out that match. Real good, very strong. And when you're going into a match like that, it's of course really important to find your rhythm right away. You know, find your stroke, feel comfortable on the table. It's a lot of pressure, of course, on both players playing on this big stage there's definitely something going on inside you many people think that Alvin is the favorite in this match or that's what they think that's their opinion but very much a 50 50 match this but not a 50 50 opening wrap the scratch on the break from Aushin, and that left the picture-perfect run-out for Alcadia to get that Q-arm going. The Spaniard draws first blood. Amazing, no? Uh, play the, the last day when everybody starts the tournament. We think about if, if I play the last day, um, and now I feel good, I sleep well. Try and give my best billiard today. Of course, everybody knows who is Alvin, no? he's a top, top player, he's, uh, he's my good friend in, in billiard. I know I need, I need to give my, my best billiard today. Of course, Alvin is the only player win this tournament before, but uh, today is a new day, we will see what happens. Trying to think only in semi-final, uh, don't... Don't think about uh, if I win the tournament, only try and give all my focus in this semifinal. This Alcadi's fourth World Championship semi-final, but first in nine ball. He made one 
eight Rack. ball semi final and two. two in ten. Our ball. current score is one to zero in favor of Mr. Alcady. Mr. Alcady to break. Nice and easy. Cue ball well controlled. Well, cue ball was uh, well controlled. The one ball actually traveled to the right spot, but since the cue ball got kicked, I don't think he has a shot now. Six is blocking. Almost straight in for a jump. Jump would leave him a 2-7 combination to the side pocket, but he's already assessing the table layout and where he would play the push out to. After the break, a double, double time, one minute. It's a difficult push out. With the push, push out called. You position the cue ball anywhere on the table. You can pocket the ball. You can even hit the one ball. And the incoming player, Elvin Ocean, will have option. And of course, you want to play a push out that is tough for the opponent. Ocean, but if you get it back, you also need to do something with it. So very often, this is a tough decision to make. And it helps, of course, when you know your opponent. And do they know each other? I think they'll have played each other easily 30 times. That's absolutely correct. They know each other, they know their game, so they know what to expect here. Elbin can attack the one. Difficult with no position. He can play the snooker behind the 2 7. Hit the one ball on the left. But the thing is, the one ball would be traveling towards the pocket where the cue ball's at. Something to worry about. Looks like good speed. Yeah, this yes. was his worry, because even with the snooker... Yeah, you put the one ball exactly in front of the corner pocket, so leaves probably a jump shot, and uh, yeah, David is getting his jump cue out. It's, it's sitting nice. It's close to the rail, but he can put his hand on the rail. Yes, that makes jumping easier. And a lot of distance between the seven and the one, so he will not worry about jumping a ball off the mm -hmm. table. Attention, please. Interesting, because from this view now, it kind of looks, might actually go. Maybe he has to curve around a little bit, or he's actually, oh, he's jumping with the, with the brake cue. Needs to clear just a millimeter of the brown seven. Shot. So that was a good push out. Uh, maybe Albin didn't like it, but neither did he like giving it back. You want to make your opponent play a shot that he doesn't want to. Well, yesterday, of course, against Lechner, he played an absolutely inspired push out, didn't he, Al Qaedi? Lechner gave it in back and he played cushion first. A wonderful safety that's. I know caught your eye, Alex, and this cue ball is catching everyone's eye. Oh, wow. Almost in. Yeah, that was for me the shot of the championship. I went over to David and complimented him because uh, he had everyone guessing about his plans on that shot. He had us guessing if that cue ball would stay here on the table. I yeah, drew it back for this 3 9 combo. Well, he was off to a fast start in both his last 16 match and his quarter-final, and it's exactly the same here. 3-9 combination after that lovely little mini run out in the, the first rack, and David Alcady quickly establishes a 2-0 lead. David Alcady has been successful in the matchroom arena, as has Albin. Albin, very good in the Moscone Cup. Alcady has been on the winning team in the Moscone Cup, but his major success has been uh, the two uh, World Pool Master titles that he won. In dramatic matches. So Albin Ocean has also had a phenomenal career CV.
I uh, played a good match yesterday against Skylar. Important one uh, because uh, he looked very sharp on the table. I think with the jump shot on 5-4, the match turned around and uh, in a very positive way for me. And from that on, I played the perfect set. I had a tough draw, but I uh, played very well throughout the tournament. Surprised to be here, yes and no, and, but I think from here on, I can't really lose anymore. In, in the books or on paper, I'm, I'm the favorite, but I uh, don't really count it as a favorite. We all know David is a, is a huge player. He won World Pro Masters twice, so he's a very good player. He's a very experienced player, so uh, maybe on paper, but not on the table. Uh, I remember the, the times back when I won it, 2016, and how devastated I was in 2014 when I lost the final. So it would be an incredible feeling. Yes, he lost the 2014 final in Qatar to Niels Feyen, 13-10. But two years later beat Shane Van Brad, Boning in the title three. match to Our be champion of the world. Two to zero in favor of Mr. al -Kady. Mr. al to break. I had a nice little pop break in the previous rack, meaning medium hard, straight on the one. This time he chose to cut it more than before. And uh, now he didn't make a ball, so not even a corner ball went in, which gives Alvin now a chance to probably, as it looks like, play a safety here. Yeah, you can thin off the one, that's what he's looking at. Running Playing that shot, he would be guaranteed to block the one and then look yep. for the cue ball snooker as a bonus. Play the one towards the three ball here and get the cue ball back up. Get some space between cue ball and the one ball. And I mean, he played well, but it, of course he, he leaves now a combination. So I don't know if he can, if David can, you know, play the, hit the long rail go low on the cue ball if you actually can see it directly well he can he can swerve it's a minor swerve or he could jump over the edge of the four there's no chance to carry him the nine in worked out well mm -hmm. one's enough but there he has three intervening balls Attention, please. Not too many options. Albin is looking at the one rail hit to the one. He could also play two rails. A player will assess the difficulty of the escape of the various options and the likelihood of resaving. Sometimes you play a more difficult kick shot because the chance of resaving will be higher than. Needs to hit it full with speed. No. Ooh. Very touchy what he tried here. Bit surprised with the speed now. Also thought he's going to hit it with a bit more speed. We're trying to m go for this. What do you think, Alex? I, I think he tried to hit it into the short rail and back up again, mm -hmm. and the cue ball towards the seven, seven, but he hit it thin. But I've mentioned it before in the World Championship. Overall, I'm surprised by how few times players choose to uh, just take their risk, take mm -hmm. their medicine, hit it with speed. Many controlled kick shots, which are nice if they work. If you hit it with so little speed, you have to hit it absolutely perfect. You know, if you have more speed and you don't hit it perfect, you still have a chance that something, you know, yes. happens so <laughs> in so favor. The, the consideration is, uh, do I know where I will hit the ball exactly? If not, then you say, okay, what will give me more future, mm -hmm. soft or hard? Exactly. That's it. Not difficult. That's how uh, the sweet Torbjorn Blom Blomdal evolved the game of three cushion billiards some 20 years ago. If soft doesn't bring you anything, hit the balls hard. A 
good shot. But what I noted here, body movement with Alcady. So he's known to be very dynamic under the gun. In the past, mainly, he had trouble staying still. So it was something I've been looking for earlier in the tournament. He, he's not, he hasn't been moving on shots, but here a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's a sign of pressure. I just wanted to say that. Yeah, it's probably the situation, the pressure now. So far, he's playing solid, making his shots. And if he runs this one, ooh, okay, I jinxed it. Well, I think that it was him. <laughs> I, the movement yeah. on the shot yeah. before and and the long pause here. He's looking edgy. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, just hit the corner, the edge of the corner pocket. And leaves the six ball in a pocket and now giving Alvin a chance to get on that scoreboard. There was no excuse for that miss. It was a terrible shot and he is going to pay for it. Three things that can break your concentration. It's uh, frustration, fear of failure or enthusiasm. And if you're building a lead, it will kick in in a less important match, maybe at 6-0, but this is the semi-final. He was thinking about protecting that lead, Okaidi. It is a race to 11, but even as early as the third rack, you can identify a possible turning point. We might have seen it there. The sixth ball from David Alcady should have gone in. It didn't. Aushin's back in this.
Missing any part of that simplicity can shake. Even a world-class player like David al -Kady. He looked like going 3-0 ahead, but the sixth ball refused to drop, and Albert Auschen did the rest, as we fully expected him to do. And so, al -Kady now finds himself only 2-1 ahead, and of course, with a winner breaks format, Auschen is breaking off to draw level. Our second semi-final this afternoon features Kuwait's Omar al Shaheen up against Oliver Sholnoki from Hungary. Rack number four. Uh, our current score is two to one in favor Mr. Al Kady. to prevail Mr. Ocean. in the final this evening, Keep starting breaking. out at six o'clock. Oh, beautiful squad. Wing ball flew in. Is he going to get lucky? Or unlucky, actually. Would be unlucky to not get a shot on the one. But even if he sees that one, if he can make it, he needs to get to the red three ball. Pfft. How? I actually don't see him get there. It's definitely a very good break. Good control. One ball traveled. Uh, two rails. Now, the question always is when you're breaking like this, is like, where do you place the cue ball? And I get, got kicked a little bit to the side, so I think you can see it. Super difficult going forward. Mm -hmm. Three rails with the five in the eight. The left hand long rail. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, what a shot. Well played. Beautiful. Had to load up the cue ball with side spin. And on this table, so slick, so fast, the cue ball will deflect on a, upon the impact with the cue. Perfectly passed that five ball. To come back down here for the three. Won't be able to get real close to the four. Angle's good. He can float it in, go forward, short drill, and then in between the 5 8 or punch it. Slide over with the cue ball. Attention, Attention the, please. The, the carbon shaft that he plays with has certain characteristics. One could like or not like, but what it does allow is playing this type of shot when you want to float it over with less speed. It's easier to bring the spin all the way to the four ball. Nice. That was really smooth. Smooth operator. Yes. Alvin Ocean. Cue ball trickling over towards the eight ball. Was very close to not seeing the five. Mindful Ooh, not to foul here, just making sure where he is in terms of the nine. Of course, we saw a very unusual foul yesterday with Max Lechner against David al -Kady when his chalk fell on the table and hit the three ball. I felt so sorry for him. I've never seen that before. Yeah, and I don't want to see it ever again. <laughs> no. Murphy's Law for Max. Still tricky, a six like that, because he has played many good shots to get himself in a winning position. And then, you know, it's sometimes you you can lose uh, concentration when you get prime position. And it's so important, like the six ball, that you play these shots with full dedication. And now very often you miss it, not because uh, you can't play the shot, but because you were holding back your stroke or jumping well, up or... The, the chemistry just changes. You've made the hard shots. Exactly. And then you think, OK, I got this. Yeah. Like, OK, he missed the six before. Ooh, 
Ooh, he needed to cheat the pocket to get that cue ball past the side pocket, but that was very scary. I'm sure your heart skipped a beat there, Jasmine. Uh, uh, <laughs> definitely. And also used a lot of uh, speed here, so he went a bit too far, but I think he's still good. But yeah, definitely had to cheat the pocket. Like a riverboat gambler keeping an ace up his sleeve. Nine in, though, very cleanly. And with that, Alvin Auschen is back on level terms. We knew this was going to be a cracking semi-final, and right now the first four racks have been halved. Beautiful out by Alvin Auschen. That's his route to this semi-final. He lost early on against Roberto Gomez in a remarkable match. He was 8-0 down at one point. At 8-1, Gomez missed the eight ball. Aushin came back to 8-7, had a chance to make it hill-hill, missed a six down the rail. Gomez just about sneaked through, but since then he has been unbeaten, beating Caden Hunkins, Sanyan Perlovanovic, Torsten Homan in a battle of former world champions, then Miesko Fortunski in the last 16. That was 8-8, he pulled away, and against Skylar Woodward it was 5-5. And after a, an inspired jump shot in the 11th rack, Aushin pulled away again. His toughest match against Fortunski, I watched that. Fortunski had two shots at the one to make it 10-9. And this is the record of al Qaedi, who has also suffered a defeat in the double elimination phase, beaten by Jeremy Sosi, 9-8. But then, of course, in the last 16, boy, did he get his revenge with an 11-4 win. Also beat Radoslav Babica, the Polish veteran, in the last 64. That's his widest margin of victory so far, 11-3. Mr. Ocean to break. And Alex and Jasmine, great to see the fans back. It is, Phil. Without the fans, the semi-finals, the final, the conclusion of this world championship. You know, my juices would be flowing very enthusiastically, but seeing the crowds come in it's just so special it's getting back to normal yeah, and the match from pools here is something so special you need fans you need emotions i mean that you know makes all of this even more special i mean look at this venue this arena it's just fantastic and fantastic is also the layout now for albin after this break yeah, it happens often uh, I think maybe I'm superstitious, but if you make uh, a difficult break, like Albin concluded in the fourth, you often get rewarded. And myself, at least, if I don't get rewarded with a nice open layout after, I feel well, I've done by, I've been done by. Still good enough on the three. I think he can avoid the seven with the cue ball. But he certainly understroked that shot. And now he wants to go into the long rail, come back out for the four ball. Now, the harder you play the shot, the longer it takes for the backspin to grab. So he can't hit this hard. Don't think he can get yeah. straight in on the four. We need the smooth operator again. Yep. Well, it perfectly back in position yeah when you, you play the shot you need the right speed so the cue ball gets time to actually you know uh, get that spin stun forward interesting shot this on the six it's straightforward but still you know some players could roll and put more side spin on the ball Others would stay on the vertical axis, stun it. Hmm. Can play this very economically. Stun over. Eight ball to the other corner. Or force it, seven and eight to the same corner. Got 
going high left, seven and eight to the same corner. And for a moment he was trying to play it very minute, but this is, I like this, you're under the gun, <laughs> open that stroke, hit a ball with a bit of, of oomph. I think it's also a sign of, you know, when you, when you feel confident, you know, it's like when, when you lose your confidence a little bit, then you start maybe rolling the ball or just... Well, that is just what you want, a lovely break and run out from Alban Aushin to take the lead for the first time. Remember, he was 2-0 down. The sixth ball was missed by David Alcady in the third rack, and since then, Aushin has just piled on the pressure. He leads 3-2. What a great tournament this has been over the years. It started out in 1990. Earl Strickland won the first two championships. Over the last decade or so, it's been played exclusively, exclusively in Doha, Qatar. Lots of big names on that trophy. Many Europeans, latterly, the likes of Darren Appleton, Torsten Homan, Niels Svein, Joshua Filler, Fedor Gorscht, and of course, in 2016, Alvin Auschen. We know that he beat Shane Van Boning in the final that year. He beat Alex Pagulain in the semi-finals, Jason Shaw in the quarter-finals, Mario He and Francisco Sanchez Ruiz in the last 16 and last 32, respectively. Imagine the pressure he was under in the final 2016, right, six. having lost Our the final two years two before. In favor of Mr. Ocean. Mr. Ocean to break. It's a nice monkey to get off your back. Yeah, I remember watching this back at home with our mother. She was a wreck. <laughs> and she made me even more nervous, so. But it was amazing when he won, you know. So, Jasmine, tell us what age he was when he first took up the game and when you first realized just how good he was going to be. Well, I, I remember that uh, when I look at old videos that um, our parents recorded, we had this small, small baby table at home, at the apartment and uh, at the house. And uh, no, I was I was playing on it, and I, I think we both started around at the age of three on this baby table. So then, when we got older, we they put us on a chair on the big table so that we can reach. And I think when we were like six, seven, we we're tall enough for the big table. So it really started at a very young age. Alvin just playing the exact same stroke as he did before when he had to get from the seven to the eight. Four is gone. It's the three, then the purple five. And I think it'll leave an angle to go out two rails, short, long, to come in towards the green six. Mm, that's a lot of angle. One rotation more is what he played for. I think he wanted to go a bit further with the cue ball. Now it's possible that because of the angle and maybe a little bit of stretching, Attention, please. that he plays one rail here. These shots, you always have two options. Go straight down from the short rail or go two rails. Come back out, personal preference. Oh, that's nice. Smooth operator is doing it. Now Katie will be wary. He knows what kind of a groove Elbin got in his match against Woodward. Like was 30, 40 minutes in the zone, absolutely in the zone. The brutal, cruel world of top class nine ball pool. David Alcady seemingly. Off to a flyer, missed that six ball, and ever since, 
Alvin Aushin has been in firm command. He leads 4-2. See why, sorry. Welcome back to the Marshall Arena in Milton Keynes, where Albin Aushin has taken a 4-2 lead over David Alcady in this, the first semi-final of the 2021 Whirlpool Championship. The story, Alcady led 2-0, missed a six ball when he was steaming towards 3-0, and ever since, it's been all Austria. Next up, Omar Al Shaheen against Oliver Solnoki from Hungary in the second semi-final. So there is Albin. One of our commentators is Jasmine Ash and his big sister. And he's not always been this cool. Sometimes he used to allow, allow anger to get the better of him when he was playing in matches. A little bit like Roger Federer, mm -hmm. who's cooled down. Right. I mean, it was more outgoing. Yeah, that's for sure. But, you know, that's the beauty of sports. It teaches you. You learn, you grow, right. you get seven. more experienced, and uh, you calm down. And, of course, he gets older, Mr. too. Ocean. So he definitely Mr. changed. Ocean, but break. in a very positive way, of course. Absolutely. Mm, good speed. A good bump. And a good opening. Looks like Okadi will have another wreck to think about that missed six. And I'm sure he'll reminisce about the shot he missed in the World Pool Masters. He played perfect up to 3 1. Missed one open shot just like he did on the six and that was it for him remained on three in that match doesn't look as calm as yesterday understandably 
nothing he can do. Nice layout. This is the hardest shot. I would like to get to the right side of the blue too, below, from this perspective. Because then you'll... Yeah. From this side, you have to get that angle right, so the 6 and 9 don't come into play. He's good enough. Now the 2, 3 and 4 and the 5 are easy and the route from the 5 to the 6 is pretty straightforward. Which is a trap in itself, if something is straightforward. Mm -hmm. You cannot let your guard down. Very often we say, you know, the easy, or what looks easy is very often are the most difficult runouts <laughs> because you kind of know you have to, you know. Yeah, in pool you almost have to do the opposite of what you feel. So if you feel tight, you got to open up. If you feel really good, try and stay compact. Mm -hmm. If the table is tough, play with courage. And if the table is easy, stay humble. Exactly. Now swing it round, and it's all about the angle on the green six. Thank you. I'll probably end up very straight on that six ball. Yeah, you could see him right away waving with it with his hands, knowing that the speed was probably going to be a bit tricky. Because he left himself quite a bit of angle on the purple five, couldn't really dig into the ball. I think this he can draw it back, right? Yes, yeah. this is yeah. low left. Long stroke, we'll see a long follow through. He'll drop the elbow. Hoppa. Very good. Yeah, so he had a little bit of an angle, so that it's good for him to draw it back here for the eight. And now being able to finish this rack. This is very impressive stuff. Not just the way the scoreboard is reading, but the way he's achieving this lead. That's four consecutive break and run outs, and Albin Auschen now leads by five racks to two, almost halfway to his goal of making the final. Now, Jasmine, of course, when the Women's World Championship was on in China a couple of years ago, you almost won it. Can Albin Auschen win it here? We'll find out first, though. Over to Michael. Yes, thanks very much, Phil. Albin showing his class. Carl, how has it so far? Yeah, it was all David Arcade, wasn't it, at the beginning? And he missed that six ball to go 3-0 up. He would have had the break. Since then, he's been froze out, and it's all been Albin. So now David's in a little battle of the mind. He's got to regroup and try and get back in the match. Try and get back in the match, but we've seen it all week, haven't we? When you're sitting down for that long, you, the ascendancy goes, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, pool's just one of them games where it's all about chances. He's just got to sit there, be patient, obviously hope he gets some form of shot and just crawl his way back into the match. There's still a long way to go. Albin seems to have got better as, as the matches have gone on. Yeah, Albin's like real big pressure player. You know, he's done really well in the Moscone Cup over the years, so he's no stranger to this setup. He wants to win this title for the second time. So Albin in control, back to the country team. Rack number eight. Our current score is five to two in favor of Mr. Ocean. Mr. Ocean, to break. Will the excellence continue? Well, one thing is sure, David Alcady will be changing his break speed when he gets the chance. He was breaking them way softer than Alvin is. And even though Albin does not have a shot here on the one, the wind ball is flying in. Very gentle roll up. It's difficult to miss hit this shot for the distance and the proximity of the one ball to the short rail. So much so that you could almost look for an alternative. 
Mm -hmm. Just gonna probably roll the cue ball just behind that three ball. Oof, tough one. Oh, yeah, was a tough shot. So uh, is it with more time on the clock, mm -hmm. I'm sure he would have looked for other opportunities mm -hmm. and maybe then still decide that this was the mm -hmm. shot to play, but the difficulty level was very big. And even if you if you play this, you'd rather have it too thick than too thin. Because, you know, it's wide open table now, a lot of uh, space for the one ball. I'm interested to, to see how well Arcadi will stand still over the shot. Is he going to be pulling and moving? It's nice to watch if a player is on and he's... Now it's, it looks very dynamic, but it's not what he's supposed to do. That's a very important uh, moment now for David. He has a chance now to you know, get another point on that scoreboard, you know, find his game again, you know. So it's really important to take this chance now for him. Yeah, the pressure is immense. He can lose the match here. He has a pretty bulletproof stroke, a firm grip. Hits shots with panache. A little bit of stun, so he hit that eight ball on the top side and kept that angle on the green six. Job is done, now stay with the program. out come in towards the eight ball oh oh David you know he'll recover <laughs> he'll yeah. recover but uh, he's not there yet came close to losing position there. Jasmine identified that as a very important rack for David Alcady. It most certainly was. He real establishes himself in the match as a force. Albin Ashen's run is interrupted. Alcady though still trails 5-3. So much to play for today. It's a 50,000 US dollar first prize, that coveted trophy, and of course, massive matchroom world ranking points. 95 go to the winner, 75 to the runner up. Already, the semi finalists have 60 points. And when you think, particularly for the Europeans still left in, the top two in the matchroom world rankings will play in the Moscone Cup to be joined by three wildcards. And so even if you don't go all the way and win it, if you get to the final, that is a massive leg up. Well, no doubt who that man is supporting the Hungarian football shirt on, Oliver Szolnoki, who's up in our second semi-final against Omar al Shaheen. The big surprise of this tournament, even on the European tour, is relatively unknown. Haven't heard of him any time at a Euro Tour event taking down one of the big guns. And who knows what the result in this tournament, if it were to be third, second or Rack first, could do to kick nine. on his career. Our current score is five to three in favor of Mr. Ocean. So yeah, very often you have this break. one big, you know, moment in your career when you finish in the top or even win a big tournament all of a sudden your career after that looks completely different
Well, of course, Jasmine, you've won so many titles. Those European Championship titles are unbelievable. I think in 2010 in Zagreb in Croatia, didn't you win eight ball, nine ball, ten ball, and straight pool yep. all in the same European Championship in a couple of weeks? Or yeah, that's true. Ball. That was uh, the first and only time that actually happened at the European Championships um, that one woman won all four golds in one event. So that was, I know it was, I was exhausted after <laughs> the European Championships. I was absolutely exhausted. Well, the trophy engraver knew how to spell your name by the end anyway. That was the good thing. <laughs> the trophy cabinet in the Ocean Academy. House must be, <laughs> it must be immense. Well, we have a billiard sport academy, which is placed in Klagenfurt, Austria, in a, in a big stadium. And Alvin and I were practicing there and taking care of this academy. And yeah, all Ocean, our trophies are there. Option. Looks quite cool, though. Maybe, hopefully, one more soon. <laughs> David Okedi opted to play a push out. He'll get this back. A kick shot. But with the two, seven, five, six, and nine. I said for a kick shot. No, you can see enough of the one. No, the, the kick shot is not good. But I don't see what kind of safety he can play other than the containing one. Long rail long mm. reel but there is a big gap and i'm sure alvin can see the one ball without a problem now he's gotta answer it with a good safety we he can cut it to one send it directly towards a nine but the cue ball will Station be place. wild you can also bank it in between the two and seven Make it go over the side pocket, the one ball. And then he'll have a nice and controlled speed for the cue ball to get behind the eight. Is he even looking for the bank shot? No, I don't think so. Yep. Mm. Oh. Good call. Smooth operator, just like you said. Because he was looking, he was pointing with his cue uh, you know, from position for the two, so I thought hmm, maybe he's actually trying, you know, to play a two option shot. If yeah. he misses the side pocket, the, the one ball is going to go down, cue ball is up there. So. Test of cueing and a test of nerve. Stay still. Super clean. Too clean, Too actually. Clean. Yeah. He would have. He would have wanted to hit maybe a little bit of the rail to create some angle and then pass the seven ball. Um, just ran directly into the seven ball and now he can't see the five, so he's going to go two rails. Can play to clip it, get the cue ball up table or hit it full. Oh, wow. He's... Foul. In the contact. top three players in, well, Europe definitely uh, in regard to kick shots. Start the clock, please. Kick shot is when you play, you know, what he did, escaping, getting to the ball off the rails. I'm very surprised about um, his misjudgment. Yeah, I mean, I, I can really tell everyone uh, when we were practicing the defense game and he's kicking, I mean, it's absolutely unreal what he does and how well he knows the table and the rails. So of course, when this happens, I'm, I'm also surprised, and, yeah, this and so was he. This was like missing a seven, like yeah. a straight-in shot. For him, this was like a standard kick shot. But I mean, it all happens happens to all of us. Misjudging maybe the rails or the angle, maybe playing too much spin. Yeah, not good for Team Austria, but it's good for the match, good for the score. A bigger likelihood of this going all the way. 8-8, eight, 9-9, eight, nine, nine. and who knows, 10-10. Ten, ten. I think the most unexpected aspect of that misjudgment was the fact that this is Albin's third match on the main match table, so he's not coming in cold, because obviously all tables play a little differently. It really was a blunder no one expected. And a mistake like that will also help Okedi to forget about the six that he missed earlier. 
the back of your mind you'll be keeping track of that like uh, am i getting lucky is my opponent getting lucky how many unforced errors did i make did he make wasn't clean it found a lot of the jaw but it went in nevertheless and the gap that narrows to 5-4 the crowd really enjoying this great to have them back for the final day of what's been a memorable five-day world pool championship not only memorable but also extremely lucrative smiles all around this Marshall Arena, where we've seen so much snooker over the last 12 months. All of it, though, sadly behind closed doors. We'll raise a glass to the, the audiences being admitted back in. Long may it continue. It was this week, last year actually, that Snooker came back with the Championship League right here in Milton Keynes. And now Pool is back with a bang. This is the pinnacle of the Matchroom Pool Series, not the culmination, of course. We've still got big events coming up later this year. But in terms of prestige and that 50,000 US dollar first prize, Brad, it's the number one 10. All Our current want score is to five win. to four in favor of Mr. Ocean, Mr. Alcady to break. Cue ball. Foul. He's struggling. We've seen before Alcady's breaks inconsistent, sometimes full, sometimes Start cut, clock, softer, harder. He's not feeling it. Yeah, he's didn't he hasn't found the right recipe yet. Feels like keeps changing. And uh, yeah, when the cue ball scratches like this, that hurts, of course. The difficult, the most difficult routing here is to get from the four to the purple five. Also, because. On the purple five, you have the eight and nine close by, so he, he couldn't keep the cue ball in center table. He would like to get after the four past that five six line. So, does that make sense? Well, I hope it makes sense after he plays the next shot. So, if he stays above the six, he's looking. At uh, at if he then would be able to play the five without running into the nine. Otherwise, he needs to come around to six, perhaps. I think he, as of it, as of the looks, I think he's straight. Is straight stra enough. He's straight enough. I think he's trying to, uh, an almost straight five or even going follow now. I don't know. No, it's gonna. Oh, he's following. He's yeah, following you're right. into the yeah. short rail. He's able to pass the nine. So it wasn't as tight as it looked. And even with that margin, margin that he had, you need to sweat the details. Therefore, the exhaustion that you talked about winning those four titles, these guys have played a very strong tournament. They will be having flashbacks for two weeks. The brain needs time to process all the intensity, all the pool that was played. Maybe in practice he'll use two calories per shot in a world championship. <laughs> what what would it be? 18? <laughs> Probably. Yeah. <laughs> the fun thing is though, when I when I play tournaments and I'm playing, you know, long tournaments, a lot of matches. I actually tend to get better towards the end because I'm exhausted and I'm tired, but then I'm also using my energy very wisely. Yeah, you know, the, the brain I don't is have lazy. Exactly. Yeah. I don't have energy to, to uh, be angry at myself or to, you know, 
think about other stuff. I'm just <laughs> down on the shot, just thinking about yeah. Your self-awareness sorts of shut down. Mm -hmm. Sometimes this could help. Oh, it's a very nice feeling. Feel like a robot. Get more sharp. I don't know how to explain that, but. Well, in many respects, that was a carbon copy of the first rack. Only the other way around, if you like. The scratch on the brake cost Al Kady, Al Benaushen, back in front by two at 6 4. Ladies and gentlemen, can we get a big round of applause for both players, Albin Ushan and David Alkady? They're going head to head right now, six to four on the score. And also, ladies and gentlemen, to give us his insight, round of applause for Carl Boys, please, ladies and gentlemen. Cheers, pal. Boo. <laughs> Is it for USA fans or something? <laughs> <laughs> Carl, uh, exciting uh, matchup here, and obviously, Alkady. Getting back into this game now, uh, what should be the plan moving on forwards? Uh, don't miss any balls. <laughs> That's always a good start. No, it's been a good match. It's been back and forth, and obviously the pressure's there for both guys. Obviously, they want to lift the trophy tonight. And do you feel the energy in here, the atmosphere, the fans are getting behind them as well? Yeah, obviously, there's a lot of pints on the table, so I think it's going to get a little bit rowdy as the, uh, the day goes yeah. on. The louder and louder they'll get, the more pints they consume. So keep down in those pints, ladies and gentlemen. We've yeah, got let's get stuff. to the bar. Let's get to the bar. Um, exciting times, but let's find out who the crowd think are going to finish this one off. So, ladies and gentlemen, make some noise if you think David's going to win and make some noise. Boo! Oh. <laughs> And now let's see if you think Albin's going to take the win. Make some noise. <laughs> All right. The crowd has made their views. We'll come back to you soon. Coming back off the live break. We're live on Sky Sports. Here we go. We've arrived at the business end of the World Pool Championship. Our second semi-final coming up shortly is Omar Al Shaheen against Oliver Sholnoki. Now, though, we're deeply involved as Albin Aushan is 6-4 up on David Al Kady. The crowds are back. 150 people in this Marshall Arena. All COVID protocols are being observed. They are well spaced out. It's been a beautifully run Rack event, as always with Matchroom Multisport. We can't praise Ocean. them highly Mr. enough. Ocean. Their organisational skills break. are through the roof. Not the first time. He's off the six with the one ball. It's makeable still. The one ball. Fine cut shot over a lot of distance. Would be a great, great shot to get on the three from here. 
I think from what we've seen so far, breaking with a bit more speed is right now a good recipe. Yeah, and I think um, it's clear. Mm -hmm. al Qaeda knows it, but I think his timing is off. Mm -hmm. What's there not to like about this angle? If he comes in two Attention, rails please. towards the three, he will have an angle on the three. And he would run into the eight, but there's, there's, well, the only thing he could do is roll it and play with check side, but that's really ugly. Makes the shot a lot, a lot harder. Just play a good speed, try and get as close as you can to the three. He didn't fancy slow rolling the cut shot on the one. No. And then having that angle on the three ball. So he tried something different, maybe running into the two, uh, the three ball, sorry. Coming all the way down with the cue ball. Maybe also knowing, once again, like a two option shot that, you know, if you miss it, might leave a tough shot for David. And he did. Attention, please. Needs to go airborne. Three dimensional pool. And I think that's, you know, sometimes really interesting when you're playing a shot and you're thinking, like, okay, I could play this way or that way, but really, how do you feel in that moment? You know, do you, do you fancy the shot or you're like, nah, feeling insecure, I go with the other. Yeah, I think type of shot. that all players will recognize that you play a shot because you think you're supposed to make it, mm -hmm. which is which is the wrong reason. Exactly. You play the shot be th because you think in that moment it's the best shot for you. Mm -hmm. It's going to be tactical. Unless he can still make that four, and that's what he just inspected. Then he can play the difficult cut to the side pocket with an elevated cue. Hold the cue ball close to the short rail. He's playing it. Good shot. Uh, good shot selection, let me say that mm -hmm. then. Yeah, not I don't taking know. any risk here. Yeah, I don't know if that four wasn't available or, or if he just didn't fancy taking on the three. And had the pressure because of the shot clock, so then you're like, okay. You have to choose quickly. You know, Alex, you called it early about the propensity of David al to move on shots. And the evidence was there again. It's funny, I just wanted to say the same thing. It really jumped up on this shot. There was a lot of body movement. He's always done that. In the previous matches, I haven't seen him doing it. But as we saw, his way to the semi-final. He hasn't had real thrillers. Not saying he's had an easy run. Apart from his loss against Jeremy Sosse. He's been sailing smoothly. It's a great speed control on this three ball. I am just not sure if he can play this four ball. He's, I think he is. He can manipulate it with right spin. Throw it a little bit thinner. <laughs> the four was definitely contacted first, and of course, our referee John Lehman was right there just to see, just to make sure. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, good shot. Sets himself up nicely. A 
and now to a closure. Seven to four, a three rack lead. After the eight and nine, he's pulling away from David. And it doesn't look like David is settling down. The contrary. One of the buzzwords of the semi-final so far has been cool, cool customer. Alvin Aushin, he most certainly is. And it's cool for the Aushin family that he's taken a 7-4 lead. That was a very intense rack. al Qaeda, it has to be remembered, overcut the three ball from distance. And from there, although it wasn't a simple run out, Aushin made it look so. Yeah, after he played that great shot off of the three, landing perfectly on a difficult four. He took well control of the rack. He's not getting the run, David al -Kady. Didn't see the one ball, had to jump, difficult shot on the three. But hey, if you want to turn a match around in the semi-finals, uh, sometimes you really have to dig deep. You can't wait for it to come to you. You've got to be a taker. <laughs> Fans are certainly enjoying this. Is there a free ticket to the Moscone Cup for the best dancer? <laughs> <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Match room. Pull serious. They need fans. In favor of Mr. Ocean. We need Mr. fans Ocean and emotions. Break. Three rack lead. Couple of good breaks, and he could really stamp his authority on this match. Pull away. I think this just was a perfect example of how you want uh, one ball to travel, control the cue ball, have a shot, good speed. Yep, <laughs> he agrees. He likes it. If you think from 2-1 down to 5-2 to up, he ran four consecutive racks off the break. If he does that here, David Alcady's race is run. With high left. End up a little left to center table. Looks to be perfect. I like that, Alex. You said that in a, a New Jersey accent. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, I remember I, there's a story, Johnny Ervolino, late Johnny Ervolino, a legend from the States. Uh, I was in 99 for the first time in the please. States in New York. And he said, you're from Europe. You know this guy, Oliver Oitman? <laughs> <laughs> Brooklyn Johnny, they called him. <laughs> So he's in position, and he now will start thinking about the angle on the purple five to get to the right side of the six and seven. And the angle he has now on the four is just perfect to achieve a good position for the five ball now. Just left of center table. Let's see how he's feeling. This is a very sensitive shot. Easy to under or over hit it. Drag it. Basically, it needs to ar arrive sliding like a stop shot and then a bit of right spin to come around. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. Smooth operator in the house, I'd say. I think on the list we now have cool customer or smooth <laughs> operator. Yeah, it's, that's going to stick after this match. 
Or the Carrington <laughs> Kaiser. No. <laughs> well, if he carries on like this into the final, I'll tell you what, forget smooth operator and cool customer, it'd just be world champion. Simple <laughs> as that. Yeah, I guess he would choose that one too. <laughs> So he wanted to draw back the six or uh, the cue ball uh, for the seven a little further, but he's he's fine. Can reach it with the extension. Of course, he has won a tournament here at Milton Keynes relatively recently. The Championship League Pool, the event that launched the Matchroom Pool series, he played 52 matches to capture that title. Yeah, that was unbelievable. <laughs> Absolutely unbelievable. Maybe that laid the foundation for his campaign here. Good thinking, Alex. Well, I'll tell you what, he's doubling up at the moment on David Alcady. He leads by eight racks to four. And I think joining Michael Bridge in the studio is one of Albin's fellow Austrians. Indeed. Uh, Max Lechner joins me. Max, um, obviously frustrated for you yesterday. Tell us about it. Especially the chalk onto the red, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the chalk was a terrible moment. I think uh, it was kind of a blackout I had, really, because I felt so good in, in the beginning. And from the first break on, something turned and, uh, yeah, was, wasn't my day. It, it, it's, it's a tough week, but are you looking back on it and, and positive that you, you reached the quarterfinals? Yeah, afterwards, I'm really proud of my performance. Fifth place was my best result. Uh, the World Championship, so in the end, it was quite okay. Yeah, absolutely. Look, you know these two guys really well. Um, are you? Think, is it going to scripts? Do you think at the moment? Of course, I'm cheering for Albin, and I'm uh, really happy to see how he performs. He's playing really good. He's uh, settled himself down after the beginning, so um, I think he will go all the way. Do you think he could go all the way to actually lift the trophy? Yes, definitely. Brilliant. There you go. Thank you very much, Max. Rack 13 begins. Rack number 13. Our current score is 8 to 4 in favor of Mr. Ocean. Mr. Ocean to break. Extremely solid break again. Basically looks like very similar to the one before. Making sure he controls the cue ball. And one ball. It's just in front of the corner pocket. He can he has a shot, so that's basically all you want when you start a new rack. I was going to ask you this earlier on, Jasmine. I'll ask you now with the balls as they are. What's the motivation when you get this far? I was speaking to Stephen Hendry about this. Actually, I've spoken to him on many occasions, the world snooker champion seven times over, who said that his greatest motivation when he got to this stage of a tournament wasn't thinking about winning it and how great he would feel if he was victorious. His motivation was to try and avoid Attention, how bad please. he would feel if he lost. <laughs> That's interesting. I mean, if, you know, when you were in this tournament, um, playing at this stage of course you want to win we all want to win so that's 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 a given but for me personally i i i think more of the performance i want to stand on, or be on that table and play well perform well and just get that moment you know where you're just at the table you're all you're at ease you're in the flow and you're just playing what you've been working for so 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 long so winning of course but for me, it's about the, the journey, the, the performance. I mean, I have, I, I've had matches where I didn't win the tournament, but the match or certain matches were just amazing, you know, that I, and I'm, I can say it here now, the day two for me here, the uh, match from World Pool Championship against Jeff DeLuna on the TV table is definitely something that I'm going to take with me. Um, because it was such a special moment, even though I didn't win the whole tournament, but it was such an important step for me, and that gives me extra motivation and energy now to uh, go back to practice. And it wasn't just a, an isolated incident, because then you followed up by beating Mark Gray, who is a former Moscone Cup player and a tremendous player in his own right. Absolutely right. I, it was 
that was an amazing match because at some point I thought, all right, you know, seven one down, just you know, take whatever you get. But um, yeah, it was an amazing journey, and uh, sometimes. Of course, winning is always great, but sometimes you got to take those little steps too because they're going to lead to something maybe even bigger. Oh, great shot. This is a super shot. <laughs> Judged the thickness of the hit on the eight ball to perfection. This was so much harder than it looked. I mean, to get as good as he did on the six. And that fuels your confidence when that cue ball keeps on landing in the proper position. Now, in an earlier match, he missed a, a seven ball, not dissimilar to this. No issue there. I don't think he has enough angle to punch to the long rail. Draw back, he'll go to the middle diamond on the short rail, I believe. Ooh, that he was coming close to the nine. This is. Well. well I mean, that wasn't. I mean. When you when you play a shot like this, you kind of think of that happening. Yeah. So, and we all know if you run into the nine like this, nothing really bad probably is going to happen. You know, it's so, humble and appreciated, but, yeah, yeah. but his apologies for me were were not in place. Yeah. Albin Ashen, of course, is steeped in the history of the Moscone Cup. He's been involved on many occasions, and based on this performance. He's got every chance of being involved again in December. Fans will be there at Ali Pali. They will return to that great cauldron of excitement and intensity. The dates again, 7 to 10 of December for the annual Ryder Cup star match that lights up for USA versus Europe. Can Europe defend under the captaincy of a certain Alex Laley? Europe. But I must say, the World Pool Championship back in the hands of Matchroom as part of the Matchroom Pool Series. It's a good contender for the Moscone Cup, like as, as, the, as the main event of the year. A beautiful string of events. Track number 14. Our current score is 9 to 4 in favor of Mr. Ocean. And also as a player, Mr. I can Ocean say it's a big honor to, to be part of this Matchroom Pool Series. And you did pay tribute to this tournament, Jasmine. Mm -hmm. Amazing wins over De Luna and Mark Gray. And and I think it's nice for you to hear that all your work on defense that you did with your brother paid off because. Yeah, thank you. That you was actually when you said that, I was like, yes. Yeah, you were winning <laughs> your safety battles. This is like okay, and I've been working really hard, and I worked together with Alvin. I said, Alvin, come on in here. <laughs> <laughs> Just. Tell me a little bit about this defense game, because he's, you know, he's really one of it. the best ones. So, but just this is this is what I said before. Like when you get that feedback, all of a sudden, you know, from somebody who's just watching you and then tells you that, is that that's moments that you know give me so much motivation and energy. Yeah, but it takes time for other people to notice. We might see some defense here because the the four ball in a very unfriendly act has blocked the two yeah and he cannot draw off of the one ball to come off off the seven and come down table hmm I'm not seeing the angles right <laughs> I'm no wide what? awake but misread that so he, he, he knew he would not have a shot on the two yeah he knew he was he, he needs to play a safety now on two balls. So the question is, what kind of safety is he going to play? So just aiming to roll it, I think. Oh, 
Nice shot. Wow. Wow. Oh, my. Well, the line of the two was not a difficulty. Neither the line for the cue ball, but to get that speed with the stun run through because he wasn't rolling the cue ball, it was sliding with the just a tad of topspin on it. I wasn't sure if he can just Attention, pass please. the four ball like he did, but beautifully played. played. Oh, okay, these kicking skills are very good. Plays a lot of three cushion, but this is super tough. Don't know how he can reach it. Oh, just one. Watch out, not hit it from behind. He could scratch then. Oh, he needed that. Wow. He <laughs> needed that. Definitely. Not intended. He couldn't have known to hit it there. A tad thicker and the cue ball would have scratched. It's just uh, an educated guess. This Attention, please. Nice. Finally, a bit of running for the Spaniard. A little bit of air. Now, Albin is looking if he can see enough of the two ball on the left side. Because then he'd have an angle to get that cue ball behind the six. Good enough. I mean, okay, he sees part of the two, but he's still under the gun. Albin, the good safety player that he is, will not get all his defensive shots right, but many times good, sometimes perfect. And if not that, good enough. Oh, oh wow. Oh, wow. painful. Almost as if Okadi is infected by Legner's virus. <laughs> Touch clock, please. That, uh, that's th that was surprising now. I yeah. This the wheels are coming off. And I refer to just Max just Legner from Austria, who Okadi beat yesterday. Just hit that two ball way too thick. He wanted, wanted to make sure he goes behind the eight ball. But that gives Alvin a chance to go on the hill. Yeah, very difficult for David O'Kady to keep some hope and aspiration. Just like yesterday with Max when he fouled with the chalk. Mm -hmm. You know, he was down, I think it was 9-3. And he had a good break. Finally made balls, had a shot, and then, then he fouled. Yeah, and I, I saw this break, and his eyes were on, on the layout, basically, knowing he's he's probably gonna have a shot, and so he kicked <laughs> the chalk onto the table with his hands, and yeah, yeah so the three ball. We'll see Max Lechner play with a, a pouch to put the chalk in <laughs> for the rest of his career, <laughs> or in his pocket, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. or with an elastic, like <laughs> some snooker players have that. That comes back. <laughs> Yeah, uh, all human beings, things like that happen. But um, wants to get that cue ball off of the rail. Shots that look straightforward, they are, but the difference between the cue ball being half an inch to the left or to the right determine how you need to play the shot. That's why they take that time to assess it. And then check it. Difference between pool and snooker. There's less room to work with. The cloth is quicker on the pool table. You lose control of the cue ball in a heartbeat. But Alban Aushen is not losing control of this match, or indeed himself.
the man from a country famous for its mountains finds himself on the hill in this semi-final. He leads David Alcady 10-4. In this all-European semi-final of the World Championship, could that be the last mistake committed by David Alcady? Scratching needlessly off the two playing safe, Alban Auschen pouncing to take a 10-4 lead in this race to 11. And of course, he's breaking off. So just one rack needed to make it into the final against either Omar Al Shaheen from Kuwait or Oliver Sholnoki. It's the biggest match of their Rack respective lives, 15. and it's coming up. Our current score after is this. 10 to 4 in favor of Mr. Ocean. Mr. Ocean to break on the hill. One last thrust required. Well, he certainly has to break down. Controlled that cue ball nicely, but uh, no open shot on the one ball. I mean, he could play safety. Not easy. The safe. Doesn't have a nice natural line. Plus, that one ball being so close to the short drill makes the cue ball very sensitive. The reaction hit it 2% now, 5% too thick or too thin, and you're off by a whole lot. It's 
looking at a push out. It's nice push little push out called. Tactical battle now. Code red for David Alcady. Which Albin will have taken in consideration. How anxious will my opponent be to stay at the table? Can I lure him into attacking a very hard shot? Just wanted to say, I, I, I thought he's actually thought he's gonna give this one back because it's still not easy, you know. Extension, please. I wouldn't know what he would play from here, actually. Rail first. Uh, if the one ball is frozen, he can play rail first, even if it's off by just a little bit. Possible. But the type of shot on this type of equipment is super difficult. A lot of deflection on this table. He's not spinning the ball, so no rail first. Strong. That's a strong shot right there. So what he did, because the one was so close to the rail, with top spin and a three-quarter ball hit, that cue ball slows down a lot. Try to make it go into the five to hold it. And knowing the cue ball would be slow, he could focus on the line of the one ball. Not at the races. Not at the races. Has played a great tournament. Looked super strong yesterday throughout the whole tournament. But now the end is dawning. <coughs> And you can trace all of David Alcady's problems in this match back to that missed six ball in the third. Remember, he was 2-0 up. He was within four balls of 3-0. Everything was going swimmingly. Then the six went astray. And ever since, he's been firmly on the back foot. And here we have a um, pretty open table, except of the eight and the nine. So the position from the course now from the five to the six but also from the six to the seven is going to be really important he has to get with the cue ball to the other side of the table to be able to make the eight ball into the corner pocket yeah so the the five is the uh, no the, sorry the six is the key shot mm -hmm. not the seven so exactly. the, if the eight is the problem ball the seven is the function ball and the six is the position ball to set yourself up right if he plays that well He'll be fine. And he has option. Off of the seven, he can come across one rail or come around three rails. Mm -hmm. That choice will depend on the exact angle. Like I said before, one inch to the left or right will determine the choice. I think you wanted a bit more angle on the six ball. I think uh, it's dif difficult to say what is lying better. I think he'll come across one rail. You know him better. I think he's going to go one rail, yeah. Yeah. And there it is. Well Ready for the win. Jasmine, you're allowed to cheer if you want to. <laughs> oh my, this is incredible. One ball for the spot now in, this, in the final. Amazing. Six break and run outs from Alvin Auschen. The clenched fist from Jasmine Auschen as she sees her kid brother into the final of the World Tour Championship for the third time.